Okay, so uh, now we'll work on a couple submissions from more of a closed guard type of situation. I'm not per se captain closed guard, um, nor do I really feel like at this point, uh, or even maybe in the future, is the closed guard going to be the position for the little guy to beat the big guy just generally, but I think it is useful and it's definitely useful to have tools there. Against bigger opponents, especially in tournament situations, for some reason even people that don't like closed guard end up there in tournament situations because there's just that or there's that kind of clashing energy, and you end up having somebody tap you, just reaction. So we'll end up there. Or they're just bigger and they just bowl you over, and instead of getting stuck in a half guard you don't like, you end up pulling the leg through. Either way, we gotta have some stuff to do to deal with the position, and here's some subs that I like if I gotta use them. So from here with Matt, little concepts that I kinda like to use when I'm in situations against a bigger opponent. From here with Matt, I got the back of his neck. I've got his wrist. Let's say I set up a traditional armbar of some kind. A million ways I could get into an armbar. Maybe it's off a of failed arm drag. Maybe it's off of um, him reaching for a collar or something like that. But let's say traditional setup up here. Boom, boom. The principles I want to focus on when I'm going out, uh, for an armbar against a much, much larger opponent. Uh, again, a lot of the stuff I like to focus on generally, but it's a special emphasis when I'm against someone who's going to be larger than me. I'm here. As I cut my angle, one of the biggest concepts I want to keep in mind is making sure that this knee is away from my face right off the bat. So this is my bracing leg, not the leg off the head. This is the one off of his ribs. As I come over, I don't want to be here and then here because I'm beginning in like a cannonball kind of a position where for him to stack me, it's just a simple shift of his weight and my knee's already in my own teeth. And if he's bigger, it's going to be pretty darn easy and I'm probably not going to finish that arm bar. So as I cut my angle, I want to swing my hips, but this leg is at a 90 from my hip. I don't allow, I don't start my armbar here, preferably. It's possible, but preferably if I'm going for a finish, not gonna. So as I cut my angle, here already. So this leg is straight up, not tilted towards me. So I'm already bracing him away. So now even if he does lean in, watch what happens when he leans in, I'm not gonna throw my other leg. Go ahead, lean in. Yep, it's possible, but look, my back is, is straight now. It's not a cannonball. So even if he does lean in, again, now, this is still finishable. Presumably, I'll have this over beforehand, but it's still finishable and salvageable. So if, if someone's going to be stacking you up and they have the, the way to be able to do that, this is going to be a way I'll be able to keep them off of it, at least initially. As I cut the angle again, I'm not starting here. Even if he's close to me, I'll do whatever I have to do, even make a little bit of extra space to be here. I'll keep myself away. But now, by the time this is here, he tries to stack, bang. I'll, I'll finish off of my shoulder all day long, this doesn't matter, but I can't finish when my lower back is on the ground. It's not going to happen at all. That's when I'm eating my own teeth. So a little detail on the arm bar. If I'm here with Matt, let's...